So let's move on to part two of axis stenosis. We learned how to evaluate stenosis on physical examination in the last video. So besides a good physical exam, are there any other clinical clues that might indicate axis stenosis? The dialysis machine can provide some of these clues. To understand this more, let's briefly remind ourselves of the dialysis circuitry and the dialysis machine screen. This is our hemodialysis machine, this is the filter, also called the dialyzer, and this is the blood pump. Undialyzed blood, denoted by dark red, leaves the axis via the arterial needle and enters the dialyzer at the arterial end. Dialyzed blood, denoted by bright red, leaves the dialyzer at the venous end and enters back into the axis via the venous needle, which is placed proximal to the arterial needle in the arm. The rotation of the blood pump creates a negative pressure in the pre-pump arterial tubing, which helps pull blood via the arterial needle, and a positive pressure in the post-pump tubing, which helps to push blood into the dialyzer and back into the body via the venous needle. This is the dialysis machine screen where a lot of important information is displayed. Let's focus our attention to the arterial and venous pressure readings. The arterial pressure reflects the pressure in the pre-pump circuitry starting at the level of the arterial needle. A normal arterial pressure is approximately in the range of minus 60 to minus 200 millimeters of mercury depending on the pump blood flow rate with 15 gauge needles. The negative suction pressure is created by the rotation of the pump, which is in turn determined by the blood pump rate. In any low flow state such as hypotension or arterial inflow stenosis or a poorly matured AV fistula with inadequate flows, the pump will need to work that much harder to pull blood from the axis and the negative pressure generated will be much higher. This will cause the arterial pressure to become more negative and the arterial pressure alarm will go off. This may clue you into the possibility of an arterial inflow stenosis in the fistula. Excessively negative arterial pressure is often the finding in juxta anastomotic stenosis as well, since this type of stenosis causes axis hypoperfusion and diminished inflow. The venous pressure, on the other hand, tends to be in the range of plus 60 to plus 200 millimeters of mercury, again, depending on blood pump flow rate and needle size. This positive pressure is generated by the blood pump and is present throughout the post-pump circuitry. Any resistance to blood flow in the post-pump circuit will cause the venous pressures to rise, that is, become more positive. This can be seen in cases of a clotted dialyzer or vein spasm or a venous outflow stenosis. Dynamic venous pressures should be measured at the start of dialysis with blood flows of 200 mils per minute. A consistent rise measured over at least three treatments may be suggestive of a venous stenosis. Another clinical clue indicative of axis stenosis, both arterial and venous, may be presence of recirculation and drop in dialysis adequacy as measured by monthly KT over V. For more detail on this, I will refer you to my videos on hemodialysis kinetics and recirculation. The link to that will be provided below. Unfortunately, arterial and venous pressure changes in recirculation, etc., may not occur until advanced stenosis has set in. A good physical exam is still the easiest and an extremely effective method of axis surveillance.